Welcome back to the Back to Space News Flash. It is the second week of 2020. How are your New Year's resolutions going? Sticking with them? Also, can we talk about my shirt? It was a present that my roommate gave me and I was like, we have to wear it on one of these episodes. So, without further ado, let's get started with this week's Back to Space News Flash. <laughs> Let's get started with something pretty cool. NASA graduated a new class of astronauts to join the Artemis era missions. Yay, congratulations, newly grads. They are nicknamed the Turtles. Gotta be honest, I don't love that nickname. But these are the 22nd class of astronauts graduated from basic training to become eligible for spaceflight assignments. The new class includes six women and seven men. This expands NASA's active corps to 48 members. This is gonna be great once we start flying. They represent the first wave of NASA's Artemis generation astronaut, said Jim Bridenstine, NASA's administrator, as we all know. He also said, in addition to expeditions on the International Space Station, these astronauts could one day, in fact, walk on the moon as part of the Artemis program, and perhaps one of them could be among the first humans to walk on Mars. So congrats to the new grads. Now let's get to the dang moon by 2024, people. Let's go. We keep talking about Starlink pretty much in every single episode we've had. SpaceX launched another 60 satellites for Starlink, including one that has a matte coating. In this process, they are calling the darkening treatment. So Elon is making a change. He has heard us. This will make everything less reflective. The Falcon 9 lifted off on January 6th, which was successful with the first stage of the rocket landing on the drone ship, but the drone ship named Mrs. Tree was not able to catch a fairing used to reduce drag, half from later in the launch. As of this launch, SpaceX holds the largest commercial satellite constellation in existence. I love reporting about this every week. Like week after week, it feels like I have boots on the ground. Real time reporting, y'all. On January 10th, we had the Wolf Moon Lunar Eclipse. Oh, Maya's not reacting. So basically, the first full moon of January is known as the Wolf Moon. Really quick, four second background. The reason they are named different names per month is because in ancient times, it was a common way to track changing seasons by following the lunar map rather than the 12 month calendar. So January is again, the Wolf Moon. And this was special because viewers in Asia, Australia, Europe, and Africa were treated to a penumbral lunar eclipse that barely darkened the moon. The Wolf Moon passed through the faint outer shadows of the Earth, which is called a penumbra, and made the moon's usual black, gray, and white tunes take a tea-stained color. A penumbral eclipse happens due to a slight misalignment between the sun, moon, and Earth. This type of eclipse needs two key ingredients for the moon to be at the full moon phase, which is reached at 2.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and for the three celestial bodies to come close to aligning, close enough for the moon to pass through the outer region of Earth's shadow, but not the central part of the shadow. When the three bodies are more tightly aligned, more spectacular eclipses happen. Partial lunar eclipses occur when the moon passes into the deeper part of the Earth's shadow, known as the umbra, and total lunar eclipses, also known as blood moons, happen when the Earth completely blocks the sun's light from reaching the moon. During total eclipses, the moon only receives refracted light from Earth, turning the surface red. Aren't we learning so much, folks? So in case you miss this penumbral eclipse, you can catch three more opportunities in 2020, June 5th, July 5th, and November 30th. The last 2020 eclipse will happen to be the darkest of the trio. All four lunar eclipses in 2020 are of the penumbral variety. The next total lunar eclipse isn't until May 26, 2021. Woo! What do you say, Maya? What do you think about those wolf moons? She loves them. This is a heartwarming story, guys. Talking about wolf moons, a 17-year-old wolf Sukier was an intern at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. He was assigned with going through data on the star brightness from the facility's ongoing transition exoplanet survey satellite mission, which is called TESS. Anyways, he was looking at a foreign system located 1,300 light years from Earth. And then he started to observe what happened to be a slight darkness in one of the system's suns. Plot twist, guys. It turned out that darkness was a planet. Whew. And that planet was 6.9 times larger than Earth that orbited two stars 
which scientists call a circumbinary planet. So this intern spent weeks with him and his mentor studying, and they said it was tough trying to prove his discovery, but it seems like the data kept being like, hey man, I'm gonna make you famous real quick. Sukir's discovery and further research that he did with NASA scientists marked the first time the TESS program discovered another planet in orbit of two stars. Their work was featured at a panel this week at the 235th American Astronomical Society meeting in Honolulu. What a great place. Sukir and his mentors are looking for a scientific journal to publish a paper they wrote about this discovery. I mean, why publish? You can just come on this channel and we can talk about it, okay? You know what I mean? Moving on. NASA has lost all contact with a tiny little satellite known as Asteria. I don't know why I put an accent in it. But you know what, guys? There's a small likelihood chance that they could still reestablish contact. So let's back it up real quick. Asteria, or Arc Second Space Telescope Enabling Research in Astrophysics, is a teeny itty bitty briefcase sized CubeSat spacecraft that scientists developed to research for exoplanet using instruments and components shrunk down for this small satellite. Okay, now we know who she is. Anywho, Asteria and engineers are enjoying a nice chat on December 5th, 2019, and since then we haven't heard a beep. Get it, it's supposed to be peep, but since it's like a robot, I said uh, beep. <laughs> Here on Earth, we will try to communicate and make contact attempts until March. Can you hear me now? But honestly, this little Asteria has been through a lot. It was launched on November 20th, 2017 and exceeded its expected two month time frame to reach primary mission goal objectives. The craft additionally flew through three mission extensions. But honestly, I'm not gonna give up hope. I think this is gonna all work out. Asteria, come back! I miss you. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the past because I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter, but I continue to talk, so we're just gonna have to nix this section for right now. But let's move on to the giveaway. Last week we said we were giving away a Walt Cunningham signed photo. Apollo 7 astronaut, very rare. Let's see, thank you guys so much for your comments. And the winner is Charles Nangle. You won, congratulations. Happy Wolf Moon, you got it. This week we are giving away a challenge coin from the Back to Space program. It is a super unique and super fun challenge coin from the first group of student ambassadors. You can see it here, it's wonderful. In order to win, you need to do three things. This is the same three things we've had to do since the beginning of when we started doing this. So first, you have to leave a comment. Two, subscribe to this channel. And three, like this video, because what's not to like? And speaking of giveaways, we received this amazing photo of one of our very own giveaway winners with his new patch that he is wearing. So, way to go. I'm happy that you're enjoying it. The future. So, apparently, guys, the same program that the intern was working on, TESS, aka Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, has just found a potentially habitable exoplanet the size of Earth. It's located only a short distance of 100 light years away. It marks the first potentially habitable exoplanet the telescope has found since it was launched in April 2018. So it also has a super sexy name of TOI 700D. Let's chat about it. It's a red dwarf star, about 40% less massive than the sun and half as cool. Hey, that's rude. You guys haven't even met him yet. You don't know if he's cool. The planet itself is about 1.2 times the size of Earth and orbits the host star every 37 days, receiving close to 86% of the amount of sunlight Earth does. Most notably, TOI 700D is in what's thought to be its star's habitable zone, meaning that it's at a distance where temperature ought to be moderate enough to support liquid water on the surface. This raises hopes that TOI 700 under D could be amendable to life. I'm in, let's go TOI 700D. We need to think of a new name, but that's it for now. The NASA SLS, which of course is key to NASA's human spaceflight plan, um, it's the first rocket iteration, is headed to NASA Stenson Space Center in Mississippi for a green run test, which is designed to demonstrate its fitness to send the astronauts that we might've just talked about earlier in this episode to the moon. Mars and other deep space destinations. The journey itself will take about nine whole hours. The SLS core has to pass the green run before Artemis 1 can get off the ground. That test series will 
put the core stages through its paces, checking out its many complicated and interconnected subsystems, and ultimately lighting up for the four RS25 engines for a full eight minutes, the amount of time they'll fire on an actual mission to go to the moon. The green in green run, by the way, refers to the previous untested nature of the hardware on the stand. After the green run is done, the core stage will take another much longer barge trip, an eight to 12 day trek around Florida's west coast and back up state east side to NASA's Kennedy Space Center, the Artemis One launch site. So we'll see what's happening there, but it looks as though it's making its way downtown, walking fast, Faces past and they're homebound, guys. That's it for this week's Back to Space News Flash. Thanks everyone so much for watching. If you liked this, please leave a comment, maybe about your favorite topic of this week. Also, make sure you subscribe, you leave a comment, and you like this video for this challenge coin. It's really cool at parties, I can tell you firsthand. All right, guys, we'll see you next week with the next episode of the Back to Space News Flash.